Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to identify the positions of the metals and the non-metals on the periodic table. You should then be able to describe how metals react to form positive ions. I'm showing you a copy of the periodic table here and don't forget you're given a copy of this in your exam. Now the first key fact is that most of the elements are actually metals. We find the metals on the left and the centre of the periodic table and I'm showing you that here. On the right hand side we find the non-metals. We can divide the metals broadly into two categories. On the far left in groups 1 and 2 we've got the highly reactive metals. You're going to look at the reactivity of the group 1 metals in later videos. In the centre of the periodic table we've got the transition metals. These are generally less reactive. In the last video we looked at the group 0 noble gases. We saw that these elements all have a full outer energy level and that explains why they're unreactive. So here's a key fact that you need to know about metals. When metals react they lose electrons to achieve a full outer energy level. This gives them the same electronic structure as a group 0 noble gas. We can see this with the elements lithium and sodium which are in group 1. Lithium atoms have got 3 protons in their nucleus and 3 electrons. Sodium atoms have got 11 protons in their nucleus and 11 electrons. So as you can see both of these elements have got one electron in their outer energy level and that's why they're in group 1. When they react these elements lose their one outer electron like this and as you can see they now have a full outer energy level. This is true for all metals. For example I'm showing you the metal aluminium here. Aluminium's in group 3. As you can see aluminium atoms have got three electrons in their outer energy level. So when aluminium reacts it loses these three outer electrons and now it has a full outer energy level like this. So you need to learn that when metal atoms react they lose their outer electrons to achieve a full outer energy level. Now that does create a problem and we can see that if we look at the lithium atom again. A normal lithium atom has got three positive protons and three negative electrons. These positive and negative charges cancel so the overall charge on a lithium atom is zero. However, when the lithium atom loses its one outer electron, it still has three positive protons in the nucleus, but now it only has two negative electrons. So the charges do not cancel. We're left with an overall charge of one positive. When atoms have an overall charge like this, scientists now call them an ion. So this is now a lithium ion. We show this by drawing square brackets around the ion and writing the charge on the top right hand corner like this. So here's the last key fact about metals. Metals always form positive ions. In the exam you could be asked to work out the charge on a metal atom when it's lost its outer electrons and formed an ion. So I'm going to give you some examples to try yourself. This shows the sodium atom again so I'd like you to pause the video now and draw the structure of the sodium ion which is formed when the atom loses its one outer electron. OK, in the sodium ion we still have 11 positive protons in the nucleus, just like in the sodium atom, but now we only have 10 negative electrons. This means that there's now an overall charge of one positive. So again we show this with square brackets like this, and we now call this a sodium ion. Here's one final example for you to try. This shows the metal beryllium, and again I'd like you to pause the video and draw the structure of the beryllium ion. Okay well the beryllium atom has got two outer electrons so it must lose these to achieve a full outer energy level like this. In the nucleus we've got four positive protons but now we only have two negative electrons so there's an overall two positive charge and I'm showing you that here. This is now called the beryllium ion. Remember you'll find plenty more questions on ions in my revision workbook which you can get by clicking on the link above. Ok so hopefully now you should be able to identify the positions of the metals and the non-metals on the periodic table. You should then be able to describe how metals react to form positive ions.